also, I have to mention this. She's got some of the most amazing nails, fingernails I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they are so awesome. And I've been, I'm like, oh, I just want to look at her nails. But so it's been fun chatting a few times back and forth with Tasha. Not much, but she's a, she's a great lady. So let me introduce her the right way because when I read this, I was like, wow, what, what a blessing it is to introduce somebody like Tasha. She was originally from Sacramento, California, and after she graduated high school in 1992, during Desert Storm, she joined the, joined the United States Air Force. Her first duty station was in Maelstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls, Montana, where she provided armed security for nuclear warheads. It was there that she met Tyler, who was also a military police for weapons storage area, that they married two weeks later in 1993. Before taking network marketing seriously, Tyler owned his own business as a real estate appraiser and Tasha ran her own business as an independent insurance adjuster. She is also licensed cosmetologist and registered wedding efficient. Together, they have three kids and live in Southern Utah. They hit Pro 10 in 2011, have generated well over 10 million in personal income, and with the help of their team, sold over 1 billion in products. So, wow, Tasha, first of all, I just want to say thank you for your service to our nation. You and Tyler both, we're very blessed to have you guys um, up front the way you did for so long. So, let me just start off with these questions for Tasha, and I'm going to mute myself and she can answer them when you're done. I'll just ask you another question, Tasha. But the question, first of all, is so tell us a little bit about your story and your journey and where you are. Okay, thanks for that introduction. I appreciate that. And I love that introduction and it's all true, but it also gives an illusion that we haven't had a thousand failures along the way. So we absolutely have and just know that no one lands on top of a mountain, right? Um, like Karen said, I graduated high school um, in Sacramento in the early 1990s and it was during desert storms. So at that time, sorry, that's point. At that time, there was, you know, a lot of patriotism. Um, and it was also a way out of my house, which was very, not a very unpleasant, or it was a very unpleasant um, home life. So um, joining the military seemed like the thing that I wanted to do as well as serve my country. So um, my first duty station was actually Malmstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls, Montana. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Great Falls, Montana, or have a desire to go to Great Falls, Montana, but it is cold okay it's, it's really cold and it's really windy um the first maybe two months i kept kind of bumping into this guy in the, in the in the hallways and he was always dressed so perfectly he was in perfect 35 10 perfect creases and it was really his boots that i noticed the most of because i was looking for someone to shine my boots just the boots right so so um so i said to my uh my roommate hey why don't you go down there and tell him to to come talk to me and she left and came back and she said you know he said if you want to talk to him then you need to come down there and i was like well who's he think he is i mean it's the not it's 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 the military it's like 400 to one you guys like what do you mean i have to go there like so i did i marched myself down there and ironically he was sitting there shining his boots and i said you know will you will you do mine and he said well no but i'll show you how and I was like, okay, that's kind of like me doing my own boots. <laughs> that's, that's not the answer that I really wanted to hear, but that was, that was basically like our first date is that um, we sat there and shined boots. I mean, I don't know what he used. I, it was like leather luster or something like that or some kind of like, I don't know. It was like glass though. You could literally see your reflection in these boots. And um, two weeks later, we just went to the Justice of the Peace and were married. So not only then was he doing my boots, but he was doing my whole uniform. So um, good, for, good for me, bad for him. Um, 27 years of marriage now. So it's just like anything else, right? Like a lot of consistency, persistency, and, and learning the art of negotiation. <laughs> um, anyway, if you haven't met Tyler, he's, he's very easygoing, very, very good man. I got very, very lucky. Um, so we got out of the military in 1996 and we kind of bounced around from job to job. Um, we had a, a child during that time. We lost, we lost both, we got both of our cars repossessed in that order. Um, he was, what was he doing at that time? We were living in Arizona and he was waiting tables at a country club 
And I was kind of just babysitting um, children of some of my friends. So it was very paycheck to paycheck, um, living in low income housing, didn't quite know how we were going to make it. But we eventually decided that we were going to return back to Utah where he was from, Richfield, Utah, which is just a little tiny itty bitty town um, off of the 70 on the way to Denver. If you blink, you will miss it. It is a rest stop on the way to a ski slope. It is covered wagons and three traffic lights. Like literally I was ill for the first three years that we lived there. Cause I was a city girl. Like, do you know what I mean? I, it, it took a lot of getting used to. Um, at that point he started um, working a job at the local Honda uh, parts, uh, Honda, what was it? A Honda, store honda they sold like motorcycles and atvs and things and he was the parts manager in the back room and i started cooking at night because i've always loved to cook so if you do ever follow my stories you know that i cook a lot um i worked in a just a steakhouse at night we kind of agreed that we weren't going to put our children into any kind of daycare at least until they could talk so he worked days i worked nights um eventually we, he met people along the way just like we do and sometimes they, they are conduits to something bigger. And so he had met a um, guy that used to come to the part shop that was a real estate appraiser named Johnny Walters. And he was always coming down from Provo and Salt Lake area to do um, real estate appraisers, appraisals in Richfield. And he's like, why don't you guys have appraisers here? Tyler's like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go be an appraiser. So we actually took the appraiser classes together. I like to say that I beat him by three points on the final. We didn't even sit by each other. We did not even sit. Everything is competition, kind of friendly competition between us. We've learned that we need to be on the same team now, even when we play games with our children on the weekends, we're always on the same team. It just works better for everybody that way. But so we took the real estate appraiser classes. He started doing real estate appraisals. I bought, um, um, a, an existing insurance adjusting business and became an independent adjuster for insurance companies in central Utah, still cooking at night, still doing our thing, right? So he was in and out of people's homes all the time and um, always getting hit up, you know, hey, I got you this thing. You want to see this thing? I got this thing that you can do. So he'd come home and he'd be like, hey, you know, there's this network. No, no, we're not talking about that. We're like professionals now, you know, like we don't, we don't need to do stuff like that. We'd actually been introduced to um, network marketing in the military and it was Amway. Okay. So I kind of knew what it was, but I wasn't like really new, you know, it's kind of like, eh, one of those things, right? One of those things. And um, so he, uh, he, he found one that he liked and he signed up and that's a whole story on its own, but it was literally world war three in our house. I was like, don't you talk to people that I know. Don't talk to our friends. Don't talk to our, it was a small tip, 3,000 people, you guys. It's 3,000 people in, at the time in Richfield, Utah. Um, people had thought that we'd lost our minds. Absolutely lost our minds. Um, you're on your own, like you were on your own. So um, I, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. And I told him, I told him he wasn't to do it either. So um, where am I here? So his attitude was like everything that he always does is kind of like, well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that I'm going to do it and you don't have to be a part of it, but this is going to happen. So um, he's kind of done that with a lot of things, actually, and it's always worked out well, hasn't it? He's sitting over here. I'm going to make him say hi here in just a second. Um, I can tell you that um, that I did not build, okay, I did not build our business. I don't, I don't ever take a leadership, a role of leadership that I didn't earn. Um, I don't think there's any glory in that. Um, but I can tell you from the, um, my point of view of what I saw him do, what I've seen others do, what I've seen fail, succeed, you know, all those things in between, because we've been doing this since 2003. So it's been a minute. Um, I know that everyone um, sees the, the end result, but they don't, but everyone kind of deals with the same thing. We all have someone that's not supportive, okay? We, we either have friends that talk a bunch of crap, or we have families that laugh at us, or even a spouse like I was, 
who just, he should have quit. <laughs> By all means, he should have quit. Like it was so bad at home. I don't, I don't think I can tell you how bad that it really was. Um, and that kind of brings us to where we are. Obviously some things had to change in our household and they did. And I'm glad that they did because <laughs> now I get to sit on here and say how wrong I was. So that's where we are. That's so great. You guys are fighters. Um, okay, so question number two is what changed your mind about network marketing? <laughs> yeah, of course, people always want to know that, right? They think that there's like some magic, but there kind of is. There actually kind of was. There was there's actually three things that um, when I can reflect now and look back, um, those, those three little things that, that I was like, yeah, that probably had, it played an impact on me changing, you know, what I, what I thought about with this, this preconceived idea of, of what I thought was going to just be absolute failure. Okay. I had no expectations of it at all. Um, the first thing obviously was monetary guys. I mean, let's be honest, like it's monetary. You're doing all this stuff. You're, you're spending, you know, our, our extra time and our extra little income that we even have on this thing that you're doing. Well, show me the money, like show me the money. I mean, there's no, bigger movement than bringing a, a check home and going, yeah, this, this, this is something right. So, and he did, and he did, he, he went out the first month um, that we were in network marketing and signed up 17 people and um, brought home the check and he bought me diamond earrings to get himself off of the couch and LASIK eye surgery. He said so that I could get some vision. So I know that's a joke. I know <laughs> it's his joke, it's his dad joke. Um, but that really was true. I had absolutely no vision when it came to this. I did not see what he saw. I just did not, I didn't see it. Um, maybe part of that is I didn't want to see it. Right. Um, and so the, the, the check was the first thing when he started bringing home money, there was something that was like, Oh, okay. But the harassment didn't stop from me. It didn't stop. It continued. Um, the second thing, it, there was a small event that I was being held. He had signed those people up and he had won something. It was in December, right? He was getting like an extra hundred dollar bonus, which was at the time, a lot of money to us. And so I was like, okay, we're going to go. And it, it was going to be held at this $12 million cabin in Sundance Canyon. Um, if you guys don't know where Sundance is, that's where like Sundance film festival is held. Very ritzy. I'd never seen a $12 million anything. So I was just going to go to see the cabin. I was like, I want to see what a $12 million cabin looks like. And at some point on the way up there, he actually had to pull the truck over and was like, get out. Because I was just in his ear like, this is so stupid. I can't believe that we're going to drive all the way up here. And we have a babysitter and I can't afford this. And at some point he was like, get out. I mean, he pulled the truck over. Okay. This was almost like, this was kind of, he was kind of pushed. Like I was just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm like, okay, I won't say anything. I won't say anything when we get there. So we go up there. It was a $12 million cabin. I mean, it was just what you expected it would look like. It had huge pillars, stacked rock, huge chandeliers of just elk horns and room after room of just granite. And he was doing his little network marketing thing, getting his whatever, but I wasn't paying any attention to that. I was just kind of going through room through room and going, and in my mind, I was like, I just, I can't believe that this came from network marketing. There's just no way that this came from network marketing. This is just, this cannot be real. Well, it was the cabin of the man who owned Nature Sunshine and his two, two of his daughters, I think there were a couple of them, but there were two of their, them there that night and they were hosting the event. And they were, it was at the end of the night, they were kind of packing all the stuff and cleaning up the kitchen. And I went up to them and I said, I, I really, I have a question. And they're like, yeah, you can, you can ask us a question. What do you want to know? And I'm like, is this real? Like, is this real? Is this just a bunch of bullshit or is this really real? And they looked at me and they said, no, this is real. This is real. This came from network marketing. And it was at that point that I was like, oh my God. And that's what we call third party validation. We do it all the time. I just couldn't hear it from Tyler. He was too close to me. He was someone that I was like, this is a pipe dream. Do you know what I mean? So just, he, and they were strangers. I, I'd never met them before and I've never seen them since. It was just them saying, no, this is real. This, this, this is, there's some validity here. And 
I walked away that night going, there's, and that's what I can remember the most of. Can you believe that? It was almost 20 years ago. And that's what I remember is walking away that night and going, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something here. And the third thing, the third thing was just watching him put his head down and go to work and not looking up until it was done. Okay, that's one of the biggest mistakes I see people doing and have done in the past is looking up until the work is done. Okay, there was no vacations in our home. There was no taking weekends off and doing, like he put his head down and he went to work and it was plane, trains and automobiles in the house. Um, we never get anybody here, but you know, I guess somebody's here now. Um, and he just went to work and he didn't take no for an answer and we didn't see each other. Okay. And it was not fun. And it was not, ex it wasn't really that exciting <laughs> for me because I'm, I was stuck at home with two little kids. Um, this time it was like 2003. Um, they were like four and seven and I was going full time, um, to hair school on my GI bill. So we didn't have any extra time to do anything. He was making this thing work. And, um, you know, at some point when you see someone that you love trying to power boost their way up a hill at some point, okay, like if you're human at all, you get out and you help push, you know, and that's, that's what I did. I was like, Hey, you've got this thing. We're going to do this thing. I'm not going to complain anymore. I'm not going to harass you anymore. I'm not going to be your biggest sabotager and I'm just going to get behind you and not be a pain in your ass. I mean, I still think I am a pain in my ass, even after everything, but I am, um, I was, I was all in and it was kind of a what if, cause I, I still didn't have any real expectations and, um, that's crazy, right? I think that's crazy. He had all of these expectations, but what I have learned since is like, if you don't have the vision, like vision can be borrowed. You can, people do it all the time. They're visionaries. They're the ones that create vision like Ford or jobs or anyone who's created something that people didn't see. I just got really lighter. Um, didn't see before. And that's, that's always what Tyler has kind of done for me. I just, I wasn't, I come from a home life of strictly employees, like never, never someone that really owned their own businesses that was, were successful. Um, and we just would sit up in our little attic 1934, room up in the top of our little house that we bought for $84,000 and talk about his dreams of owning golf shirts of every color. And that's really, and I was like, dude, I don't think you're going to make enough money to do that. <laughs> but that's really what it was. What it was. It kind of started small, like it started small and then, and then your dreams evolve as you do, you know, and it just got bigger and bigger and, and it's crazy to think about what, what we've really achieved together. I mean, when he first started bringing home those $20,000 a month checks, that was a big deal. And that's on the, sh the very small end of what we've made in this industry. Um, it's, it's totally real. And, and literally anyone who has the, the tenacity and the grit and the, and the, and the drive and the wants to, to go and excel and, and achieve something big, it, it takes something big, you know, to, to, to have something big. And, um, it is a sacrifice and there's a lot of times you're not going to want to do things, but the answer is always yes. Until you get to where you want to be, you know, do you, will you do an extra call for me? Yes. Will you go to a meeting for me? Yeah. You don't want to do it. Okay. It's, it's really not why, you know, it's uncomfortable and it's, and it's not always fun, but I will tell you, you will meet some of the most incredible, amazing human beings that you've ever met in your entire life along the way that you normally would have never even come, come across paths with. So for every, you know, uncomfortable thing in opposition, there's a, a wonderful thing just waiting to happen. So That's yeah, so awesome. those, three things, it's those three things, it was a monetary thing. It was, um, it was third party validation. And then it was just strictly putting his head down and going to work and, and, and there's nothing like movement in your business when things are happening. He always had another, iron in the fire you know he, he just he did he didn't stop he didn't stop so that's yeah. so great Tasha I think you're speaking to a lot of people that <clears throat> might have a spouse that just doesn't isn't quite on board yet and and then something clicked and you jumped on board and I love what you said when you said vision can be borrowed 
that is so true. There's a, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, so I appreciate that. So my last question for you is what would be um, your best advice for us when it comes to network marketing? Listen, there's a lot of hoopla in this industry, Kay. There's a lot of ah, screaming and jumping around and sometimes acting up. That doesn't get me, okay? That, that get, and a lot of people like it. A lot of people like, but like we're very analytical people. Like you have to know that this can be done is because it's been done. You know what I mean? It's like, do you understand? Like if it's been done, it can be done over and over and over again. Um, you just, and there, and there's no special stew okay there's no special sauce here like really it's a bunch of hard work it's it's a lot of work and um if you if you if you can listen to people's stories and just take pieces of it that's gonna that's gonna help you um get to where you want to be faster you know having a mentor i think is very ideal in this game um a lot of pitfalls can be jumped over or swam, you know, but you don't have to, unless you like pain. <laughs> okay, because you will find a lot of pain in this game if you're looking for it. Um, time and vision are literally your biggest assets. Um, I've admitted to you that I was one of those people that did not see it. I did not have that vision. And then we talked about how vision can be borrowed. Um, start, start surrounding yourselves with these kind of people. Um, the talk is different in the winner's circle. It just is. They talk differently. Um, hang out with the people who have it. And, and that's why events are so important. Okay. Because you are getting little pieces and nuggets and information and meeting people and, and, and everyone kind of has the same goal. You know, they, they, they might not necessarily want the exact same things, but everyone wants their time. Okay. Everyone wants their freedom. Everyone wants a better life for their kids than what they had. Like the, the, this is very common and, and even as much travel as Tyler and I have done, we lived over in Amsterdam for several months, um, helping build life advantage. People pretty much all want the same things. Um, I think we're more alike and we're even finding out even more so how connected we really are, um, with the circumstances of the world today. Um, you know, you, it takes belief, it takes belief in this and, um, when you build your belief, the behavior follows the belief. So, you know, goals do require belief and belief is the fuel that powers you towards the success of the goal. Okay, you have to know your goal too. <laughs> you have to know why you're doing this. Like, it's very hard to score when you don't, when you don't know where you're supposed to be scoring at. You have to have a goal. Um, this opportunity can be as big or small as you decide that you want it to be. Okay, that's the thing is it's like, it's literally really all up to you. Um, you. You change your behaviors to fall in line with what you want. And then you have um, all the time right now to study and, and perfect, perfect your approaches. Like you have all the time right now. You know, we're all inside, well you should be. Um, and if, if product is something that you're very strong with, well then learn the compensation plan. Okay, if compensation plan is something that you're, you're really good at and you know backwards and forwards and you can make your way a good conversation out of it, then learn about the industry, right? There's lots of little things that you can do to perfect your game. Um, and you don't have to know everything. That's the thing too, is like you can always, um, if someone asks you something that you don't know, Tyler would ask, be asked lots of questions sometimes he didn't know and he'd just say i don't know the answer to that but let me get it to you let me find out who has the answer it's okay to say that you don't know know something you know um people's oh a big one is people's opinions simply don't matter okay at some point like we're all big people <laughs> you've got to stop caring about what people think so much um at the end of the day they don't pay your bills there are literally people that laughed us laughed at us, made fun, all of those things that you hear about that people do when you, when you're doing something different. We, we, we had all of that happen to us. Um, we have big families and nobody in our families do this. Um, which is crazy now because now it's kind of like, Hey, can I borrow some money? <laughs> but wait, you want the money from doing the thing that you didn't want to do, but you can still do the thing. Why don't you come do the thing and make your own, you know what I mean? 
Um, there's actually a little bit of satisfaction in it. I don't want to sound too whatever. Um, but there's a part of us that are like, you didn't want to do it. You know, those people, this is what I will promise you. You can write this down. Those people that tell you no and made fun of you and harassed you, they will be in the exact same place 20 years from now as where you left them. So that I know for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Well, we did that. We want to thank you so much for uh, being with us tonight, Tasha. This has been such a blessing. And um, I'm sure Tyler, we just, hi, hi, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you listening to me? Oh, and the one thing that I want to say too is like, which I think is a good to say right now, there's a Chinese proverb and it's the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the second best is now. So if you haven't heard that, I think that's, very applicable right now that's fine if you have you're not to worry you can always start over you can always start going you can always pick up like this is a long this is a kind of cross-country race this is not a sprint okay so you can sit down and take some breaths but don't take your shoes off okay because you're you're gonna you're gonna want to keep going you know and you get to decide wherever that is too but um no better time than now that's so great. That's so great. Well, bless you. Thank you for coming on. I'm going to turn it over to Julia Mark and see if they have any questions, anything they'd like to say. Well, we've got lots of things to say. First, <laughs> I, want to, I want to say thank you, Tasha. That was great. Tasha. I, not, so genuine. I loved it. I, you, I don't know, if, Tasha, if you even know our story, but 10 years ago, I was wearing this sucker. And oh. I I was miserable and because of the hard work that you and, and Tyler put in for decades, you guys paved a path for people like us that had no idea what we were doing that created this opportunity that's been, that will be transformational for generations. And um, on behalf of my children's children, I want to thank you for all the sacrifice and all the determination and all the crap that you guys faced on our behalf. And, and I know it wasn't for us in the beginning, but the, the fruit of what you guys have done and you poured in has, has literally changed thousands and thousands and thousands of families. And uh, we're, ours is just one small one, but we're so we're grateful. We're so grateful, yeah. We're so grateful, thank you. That's, that's really nice. I mean, I don't usually sit down and, and think about, you know, the reach it really, it really has had. Um, but I, I do know a lot of people that have, are home just raising their families now that don't have to go to Home Depot. I mean, could you get me a mask, though? <laughs> no, they're out. <laughs> he hasn't worked there for seven years, nine years. No, ten years. Yeah, he's been gone for ten oh, years. Well, nine years. Nine he years. only worked there four years. But anyway, it was uh, hmm, an exciting time in our lives. It's challenging. <laughs> That was great, Tasha. Thank you. Thank you for the, you know, just the little bits of info into y'all's little lives and what you, where you came from. You're so welcome. If anyone has any questions that I could answer, if you have like a question kicking around that. Yeah. Does anybody have any ask, questions? Like... I don't have a question, but I just have to agree with what Mark shared. Um, I'm also just very grateful for you and your husband and all you have done uh, for Life Vantage and just what a difference it's made in so many lives. So I just want to also express my, my gratefulness. Well, thanks. That's nice. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah. I know you guys have questions. It's not scary. <laughs> I'm not scary. My bark is worse, is worse than my bite. <laughs> Here's my favorite question, Tasha, for, for Life Vantage family. What has been the thing that has surprised you most in your Life Vantage jersey? Jer jersey? No, in your Life Vantage journey, apart from network marketing, because I, you know, we get that it was an eye-opening thing progressively for you. But what, what about Life Vantage has been surprising to you? Maybe in a good way. <laughs> Listen, I haven't, I haven't worked a full-time job in 17 years, and I haven't owned an alarm clock in over 11. So I think that's the best thing ever. Like I, 
I didn't have any expectations, you guys. So when something, and I still really don't, <laughs> I'm still kind of like, oh, yay, we get to go to Hawaii again, you know? I'm, I'm not the planner person. Tyler is, we're, we balance each other out very well because he has expectations and he will find a way to meet them. I'm kind of just along for the ride. <laughs> He's always like, what are your goals? I don't, I just wake up. I'm very in the moment. Okay. And if it, if it wasn't for him, I'd probably have my very own double white. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're so funny. All right. No, that's for real. I'm not even joking because I'm here and I'm there and I'm a little bit, but I, I have watched him do what it's take, what it takes to get to where we're at. And it's good for him too, because I teach him to live in the moment. That's right. And if that's you're right. always worried, if you're always anxious for the future and fretting about the past and you're never, you're never truly enjoying the moment that you're in. So, um, another thing about life, Anna, um, well, there's nothing bad I can say. <laughs> I'm always looking for the bad first. Wow. Um, the trips are amazing. They treat you super, I mean, you get what you deserve here, you know? You earn it and, and, and it's much better than like a nine. I can't imagine working a nine to five. I'm not even employable at this point. Yeah. Right. Well, and this is a question for Tyler as well. If he's there in the room with you, uh, talk to us about the next 12 to 24 months. What's your, he's there. What's your he's there. <laughs> Tyler, you don't have to be seen. Dude. No, you don't have to be seen, dude, but talk to us about the next 12. You know what? He's an artist. He's been there painting all day. <laughs> there he is. Wait a minute. Tasha Tasha and Maddie had me do family paint night, so I'm now addicted to uh making my own line of of paintings. <laughs> I, I, good. I, uh, they're themed they're themed after the virus that we're dealing with right now and I'm learning how to play a guitar from the last year, so I built my own virus band called the Quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> they're really funny. It's, they're funny. I'll put them on my story. They're all cartoons. Yeah, you should. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I, you know, this reminds me of some of the times in the past that that uh, I was building, and we had some kind of a you know chaos or some circumstance in the environment that allowed me to have some some messaging that really applied to what I was doing. I actually think the next twelve months to twenty four months is a perfect opportunity to go back to something that we're all here. You know, that we all hear occasionally uh, dig the well before you're thirsty. You know, I think that's a great message for people right now. You know, or like Tasha said, plant the tree 20 years ago, it provides you shade today. What are you going to do for the next, for the next, you know, catastrophe or for the next uh, economic downturn or for the next, you know, time that you're stuck in your house? And I, I really wish I could go out and emphasize to people how important that messaging will be for the next 12 to 24 months. And saying that, I still know everyone's going to go out and spend most of their time talking about Nerf 2, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> it is. But if you're trying to build a leveraged income, I mean, what, what better time than right now to help, you know, help people understand what being prepared looks like? What does being prepared look like for the next situation that we're going to be in? You know, one thing we don't have to do is worry about our finances. We get paid whether we're sitting at home painting you know, painting pictures or not. And it's because of the efforts we made a long time ago. You know, we planted that tree 10 years ago. And so when this came around, we're just, we don't have at least, the one thing we don't have on our plate is the financial stress. You know, we still have the same health concerns everyone else does as you run around and you hope you don't run into something or somebody that has the virus. But, but other, I mean, we just come home. We're, we're free to come home. I'm not worried about how to pay for things. I'm not worried about how to make my, my mortgage payments or house payments. I and mean, we, we moved our son home with us because he was living in Las Vegas. We said, you're not, you're not gonna stay down, there. come home. So we literally just moved him home and said, when this is over, you can move back. And those are the kind of decisions that you can make when you've made really good decisions before the, uh, before the chaos hits, before this, these circumstances hit us. And so I, I was on a call the other day with, with Dr. Campbell and I was just like, guys, just understand what the Boy Scout motto, just be prepared. You know, are you prepared? If I would have told you three months ago that we were going to be dealing with this today, would you have done some things different than you did? Well, what if I told you a year ago or two years ago? And what if I could prove to you we were all going to be quarantined in our homes two or three years ago? Would you have done something different? You know, I like to ask people a lot of questions. What would you have done different? Would you have made that extra phone call? Would you have talked to people about their financial situation? Even though that's really scary for a lot of people to do, 
would you have done it? Would you have talked to people about their financial situation? I'm just not afraid to do it, you guys. I, I learned a long time ago that, that if you know stereotypes are there, you should probably try to break them. You know, Men don't ask questions. Well, I do. I ask them all the time. I ask them all the time. If I'm lost, I will pull over. I hate wasting time. I hate, let me tell you something, it's ridiculous. If the stereotype is you don't talk to people about their finances, I'm gonna to talk to you about your finances. Let's talk about it. Let, let, let's just go out there and find out, are you ready for the next bad situation? Because I wanna be prepared, you guys. I, I, I've always wanted to be in a situation where I did not have to worry about these kind of things. And I think you've got the next 12 to 24 months while this is fresh on people's minds, to really talk about some of the hard topics, really bring them up and then show them that there are good companies, there are bad companies and what's the difference? You know, there's good companies, there's bad companies, what's the difference? I think these are great conversations to have with people. If you're afraid to talk about the difference, then go educate yourself like Tasha said earlier about educating yourself on the industry. Understand what industries can, can survive these kind of things. And I'll, I can tell you what they are basically. It's all the health and wellness stuff. It's, Believe it or not, it's cosmetic companies typically still do really well in bad economic times. So health and wellness, cosmetics, skincare type companies, which we have, you know, we fit both those categories. They, you know, people always like to look good and feel good no matter what's going on in the economy. But go study these things. Go look at the companies that have weathered the storm for 30, 40 years. Go look at those companies and understand why they were able to do that so that you can have the conversation with people about are you going to be prepared for the next one? And that, and that's, Really how I've, I've always tried to capitalize on these kind of things, you guys. And some people don't like that word. They think, you know, you say the word, well, look, I'm not doing it just for me. I'm not the only one I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help everyone not have to experience it. If you have anxiety or if you have some kind of insecurity in your life right now, well, let's fix that so you don't have to have it next time. Right? I mean, if, you, if you're feeling this, if you have this internal feeling, let's fix it. Let's not sit here and well, let's fix it. Right. And these are the conversations I have with people. So, you know, people say, well, how did you do this? Uh, well, I had tough conversations. I was willing to talk about the things that nobody else wanted to talk about. Where are you at financially? Where are you? I mean, are you good? Can you survive six months, three months, two, two weeks? Are you living paycheck to paycheck? Let's talk about that. Let's figure out a way to get some passive leveraged income. Let's figure out, look, I'll tell you right now, I run into people all the time that they want these big flashy, you know, what's trendy right now, these product lines that are trendy and exciting right now. That's garbage. You don't want trendy. That's not what you want. Trends come and go. I don't care if you are really educated in health and wellness or not. That's the game you need to be in. You need to be in long-term type products. Let me tell you something, I say it all the time. If I could turn the clock back on Mary Kay, knowing what I know about them today, I'd be figuring out what Mark's best color is right here over the phone. <laughs> That's just what we'd be doing. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I, and I, I don't think you should care if you love health and wellness or think it's exciting or not. These are the type of products that can withstand the storm. They're the ones that have proven out over history. So understand these things and have those conversations. You guys got me on a little soapbox there. Uh, good. <laughs> we love it. And, and just and just to, to summarize uh, for for our folks that are our product people, that is the most caring thing I think that these guys model. Like you you see their heart of compassion. You, you to cut through all the pleasantries and just go. Let's talk turkey. Let's shoot straight. Where are you? And come hell or high water, that's the most important thing is accomplishing the things that are best for you and your family. So I'm man. I wish we could do this for three hours, Tyler. It's so good to see you, man. Well, I'll throw one last thing at you. I find that people that have their finances in order aren't afraid to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember one time we were in like New York or somewhere and some, they were taking a look at the opportunities. Like, well, I just don't have, I think it was $1,200 or something. I'm like, you're 35 and you don't have $1,200. Is there a possibility that you would like to make a change in your life to where that's not a problem? I, I mean, I've, I've said things on those same lines, you guys, that are that some people think are offensive, but they're just they're actually just really blunt truths. Mm -hmm. If you are 35 and don't have $1,200, let's take a look at the decisions you've made to get yourself in that position. Right. I mean, I, I know, I, I hear, I know, I know. When I say that, people are shaking their head, going, "I'm not saying that." Look, it's true. It's and I don't care what age you are. I, I mean, honestly, if you're 25, 45, 55, I don't. It doesn't matter. Let's make some decisions. 
It's, it's really about educating yourself on what's going on, finding the companies that are good, ignoring the companies that are bad, and that's all you got to do. Well, and for those of, the, of us that are product people, uh, the same decisions that put them in that state financially probably has generated some kind of wacky physiological thing as well that they need. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll focus on that thing and ignore the bigger, darker, deeper problem of that you're describing. Absolutely. Well, people, people all the time, you guys, they, and, and I, this is just, this is just a little pet peeve of mine. People, you know, they, they pick on me for being, you know, knowing so much about the comp plan or the money side of it, or how to build the, the leverage income through layers and layers of leadership. And they go, you know, they'll ask me product questions. I don't have a lot of answers to product questions. And, and they, they say things like this to me. They go, well, how are you going to get people to use all these products and understand the value of these products? And I say, well, I just have a different goal than you. My goal isn't to help my, the people on my block. My goal is to help everybody in the world. And the only way I can do that is to by, by gathering up those voices that are willing to tell that story. So you can go tell, you can go knock on doors and tell people, tell your neighbors, tell the people at the gas station about Nerf 2, or you can build a team of people like I've done where you'll have hundreds or even thousands of people knocking on the doors in their neighborhood. And that has a bigger impact in my opinion. I've just, I just understand how to go out and, and have more exposure at a bigger rate than I think most people do. And that's, that's, I, I, that's the part of this game that I wanted to learn. How can my voice be projected through thousands of other voices? What's the fastest way to get there? Is it by me standing up there and just selling one Z2Z products or is it by building a massive organization to go out and, and they'll each sell the onesies and twos. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've told the story all the time. I hear, I hear all these the little analogies. I was I, years and years ago. I told the analogy of: Do you want to be the coach? Do you want to be the player? Do you want it, or do you want to be the owner? I'll use I'll use Kansas City. I mean, would you guys rather be? You know, would you rather be Patrick Mahomes out there on the field, okay? Or would you rather be Andy Reid coaching the team, or would you better, rather be whoever the owner of that team is? Which one would you rather be? Clark Hunt, baby. I'd rather be the owner. I'd rather be the guy that hires the coach who teaches the – who hires the next layer of coaches who teach the quarterbacks and the running backs and all that. I'd rather be the owner. The, and that's the, how I look at this business. The trophy is in his dining room. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he pays all those other people. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah, and a lot of people just want to be the player. I don't want to be the player. I don't want to be the one throwing the ball. I want to be the one that decides who gets to throw the ball. Tyler's literally just built leadership upon leadership upon leadership upon yeah. yes, leadership. Yes, It's a slightly different twist if you think about what I'm saying. It's a slightly different twist of what you hear typically. But I picked this up very early on. The difficult conversations lead me to the people who will go out and be the coach, not just the player. Okay. The difficult conversations help me build my organization. They build the team. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And, and I remember one particular night that Tyler stood with us in a parking lot for about three hours after a meeting and imparted uh, his passion and his belief and understanding on a lot of things. And we've seen that in action. I, I, I've seen yeah. your uh, experience in leadership and really both of you guys um, passed on to, to help other people. And, you know, we're huge beneficiaries and we're doing the best we can. Uh, to follow in your footsteps in that. Well, you guys take this opportunity. You're, you know, all, all the people on TV, and I don't care which side of that you're on, all the people on the internet, all the people, the journalists, everybody that's writing about this situation, this is a once in a decade or even a lifetime situation with. Yes. So take advantage of the circumstances. Take advantage of it. Not in a bad way. I'm not, I mean that in an absolutely good way. Let's help as many people next time this happens, if it's in our life or sometime in the next decade, not have to experience the anxiety that they're experiencing today. Y'all know somebody who is. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. All right, you guys, I'm going to run. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Tyler. We I love you guys. Tyler, you're getting Thank off you. my call. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Tasha, so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. We love you all. Thank bye. Bye. You. Thank you, Julie. Love y'all.